really simple. It just means taking one of these colonies representing a single population of billions of bacterial cells, isolating it, just picking it up and sticking it into some liquid media such as a 5 mil growth for an overnight so you can isolate a plasmid with a mini prep. Or maybe you're starting a starter culture, a smaller growth um, that you then inoculate or you add into a larger amount of media if you want bacteria to express a protein for you. We call this inoculating when we take bacteria from one place and like stick it into a larger amount of food or media for them to grow. So we can inoculate a small culture with a colony and then we can inoculate a larger culture with our starter culture. So we'll take like a mill of our starter culture or whatever, stick it into a liter of media um, and allow it to grow and that sort of thing. And much more on that in other posts but both of those are forms of inoculation um, but with the colonies um, picking here we're just we're actually doing the selection of those individual colonies so the benefit of the plate is being able to isolate the individual colonies and although there's billions of cells in there that's really not enough for what we need we need like billions and billions and billions of cells and so we can grow them in this liquid media where there's more room for them to grow there's more food and this sort of thing and so, but by starting with an individual colony, we're able to get a lot, a lot, a lot of that genetically identical, or at least in theory, genetically identical bacteria that all contains, hopefully, say our plasmid. When you are choosing a colony, you want to basically just find one of the colonies that's isolated. So you want to see like an isolated colony like this or this. You want to avoid the ones that are going to be clustered together. There are a couple of reasons for this. One is that your goal with this is to isolate a single colony. If they're close together, you're likely to accidentally get a little of the second colony when you go and take the first. Also, sometimes what can happen is you get these little tiny colonies growing around the bigger colonies. These are what we call satellite colonies. They happen especially with ampicillin because the antibiotic starts degrading in the media, especially because with ampicillin, what happens is the bacteria, the selection gene that we use, this beta-lactamase, the bacteria that have the plasmid have the beta-lactamase gene, and so they can destroy the antibiotic. But this beta-lactamase, they actually secrete it, so they're destroying it in the environment around themselves, and this makes it so that bacteria that don't have the plasmid can survive and they have a growth advantage because they don't have that plasma they often to copy and they're not having to make the beta-lactamase and all that so they get a free ride and then you end up with these little satellite colonies to avoid that you can make sure that the plates don't overgrow um, and more on this in other in my post from yesterday like don't use make sure you use fresh antibiotics and all of this stuff but when you're choosing a colony you want to avoid those satellite colonies as well as avoid the colonies that are just too close together then what you have to do is you basically just take your toothpick and you touch the colony. You don't have to get it all off. So basically what you want to do is you want to avoid getting anything else. And so you don't need to take all the colony. Remember this is billions of cells and so just a little bit is enough. You want to actually make sure though that you can see the mark where you took the, where you took the colony. So you make sure you actually got it on your tip but you don't need that much. And make sure that when you're touching it, you're not kind of like swiping it because then you can get into another bacterial colony as well as you don't want to touch the agar. Around the bacteria, there can be, because there's such high concentration of antibiotics in the plate, what you're seeing is you're seeing those like survivor cells that are able to thrive in the, even in the presence of this antibiotic because they have that resistance gene and so they're able to grow and grow and grow on top of each other. But there could be other bacteria around the plate that are kind of just persisting. They're in this kind of like dormant state. They're hibernating. There's too high of a concentration of the antibiotics for them to like grow and thrive, but they're still, they're still there. And so you want to avoid having any of those other contaminating things that you might not be able to see, but are really there. And so by doing this, you want to just select one of those big goopy colonies, touch it with your tip, avoid that agar, avoid the surrounding colonies, and just stick it directly into the media. Now, if you want to be really good about sterility, what you can do is you can use, you can flame sterilize like a pair of um, tweezers. So basically you put, dip them in ethanol and put them through the Bunsen burner. And then you can actually do this and select your colony and then drop it in. So you don't have to be actually touching it. Typically, I just, we don't really, really worry about it too much because we have antibiotics in here and stuff like this. We use sterile gloves, all that good stuff. And just make sure that you have autoclaved your pipette tips and then you can take your tip, dip the colony and stick it in. 
Now you might be using a metal inoculating loop. If you're doing this and your flame sterilizing it, you want to make sure that you're not going to be frying the bacteria when you go to take a colony. So take a clean agar plate that doesn't have bacteria spread out all over it that you can't see um, and basically just tip touch the inoculating loop onto the agar, this clean agar, remember. This is it's gonna kind of, it might like fizzle a little. You wanna get rid of that excess heat so that the heat isn't gonna be transferred to the bacteria that you're selecting when you select your colony. Sometimes it can be hard to actually identify the good colonies. And sometimes it can be hard to tell if you even have colonies or if you have a bubble in your plate. So first off, try to avoid having those bubbles in your plate. Um, it's helpful to use a stir bar to stir the antibiotics. You can actually autoclave with that stir bar in there um, rather than try to like shake it with this with the antibiotics to mix the antibiotics in because that was gonna introduce bubbles when you pour your plate. And then you might think, is that a bubble? Is that a colony? To distinguish between them, what you can do is you can kind of like open the plate up and if it's a bubble, it won't really be risen above the surface. But if it um, is a colony, you'll see this like gloopy dot on top of the colony, on top of the plate from the, even if you're looking at it from the side. It can also be helpful to identify the colonies before you actually go diving in with your pipette tip. And so what I like to do is I like to actually, um, before I do the, before I select it, what I do, but first I find a pen, what I do is I like hold it up to the light and I choose the colony. So I'm gonna choose one of those nice isolated dots and put a circle around it. And now when I go in, when I open my plate, because when I open my plate, I wanna make sure that I'm being really sterile and I have the Bunsen burner going, I have all this stuff, um, and I can work as quickly as possible when that plate is open. And so I want to have things pre-labeled ahead of time. Also, what you can do is if you're wanting to do something like what I'm doing is I'm plating, um, um, starting overnight gross, these five mil overnight gross to do a mini prep tomorrow. Basically, I did some cloning and I designed this plasmid, so the circular piece of DNA that has an antibiotic resistance gene, it has that antibiotic but it has the ampicillin resistance gene, as well as the gene for getting the bacteria to make a protein I want. And so I, I did this cloning and now I want to isolate bacteria that I've actually taken in the plasmid. And then I need to check and make sure that the plasmid's okay. So one of the benefits of having plates instead of liquid media, in liquid media, everything's all there mixed in there together. And so you can have multiple different populations of bacteria growing in here. Whereas on a plate, all these different bacterial cells are kind of like taking root and then they're growing on top of each other. And so you're going to have them isolated and then you can directly choose the ones you want by picking them. Of course, you don't know just by looking at them which ones are the good ones, which ones are the bad ones. Maybe they have some typos in that clone that I, in that plasma that I put in them. And so I want to be able to isolate the individual colonies. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to purify them out and I'm going to send them for sequencing. Typically what I do is I send two to three per, per like plate um, for sequencing. And then if, they, if, not, if they're good, great. If they're not good, then before I send the next set, what I'll do is I'll actually pick more colonies and I'll do like colony PCR or restriction digest. I talk more about these in other posts, but these are the ways that we can kind of get an idea if the plasmid is probably in there before we go and we send it for sequencing to make sure all the spelling is correct and things like this. But the first step is going to be isolating that colony. And remember that when you're on the plate, you can see these individual colonies, but when you're on the liquid, you can't. And so this is why we often start, even when we're doing a protein purification, where it shouldn't really matter if we have a couple different colonies, as long as they're all the same population, right? Um, but we want to start by inoculating from a single colony is better than just doing it directly from your transformation, although you can do it just directly from your transformation. Another nice thing about having plates is you, they kind of last, they last a while. Um, if you can keep them for several weeks, I've even used months old plates. Um, once they're like have the cells on them, um, you can use those colonies later on. For longer term storage, you're wanna, gonna want to make like a glycerol stock of them or something like this. When you go to pick your colonies, you wanna get everything prepared ahead of time before you actually have the flame on, you've got all that stuff going. The first step is going to be to add the antibiotics to your media. So typically what I do is I count the number of tubes I have. I wanna have like five mils per tube or whatever. And then I calculate how much of the antibiotic I need to add to how much media. And I take like a 50 mil conical or whatever and I prepare as much media as I need. I don't wanna waste all this media by putting the antibiotic in it right away because you need to put, add the antibiotic fresh because it's gonna degrade in the media over time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just pipette out the amount I need, add the antibiotic to it, 
and then I can um, pipette it out into the individual culture tubes. Now these tubes are special because they've kind of got this like aeration, but they also kind of like click. So when you're going and you're getting ready, you want to make sure that you kind of like loosen the cap before you go to put the pipe, before you go and you take your colony or else you're gonna be kind of like trying to hold the pipette and yeah. So basically loosen the caps first um, and then just go at it. You've had your pre-circled colonies that you selected and now make sure everything's labeled really well. I like to kind of like put a line, I color code and I like put lines on top of them so I can identify them by different clones and stuff. Uh, make sure you label all the sides and all that good stuff. And then you just go one by one, pick your colonies um, and stick them in the media. If you're doing a colony PCR, you can actually do two, two dips. So you do one dip and you dip it into a, um, a prep for your overnight culture. And then you can do another dip and you stick it to swirl it in some PCR mix and do colony PCR directly that way. So it's really helpful for that too when you have it circled so that you know that you can go back to that same drop. And remember that you don't need the whole thing so that's why you can kind of do two portions as long as you're able to identify and make sure that you're getting that same colony for each of them you can then check and see if it likely has the in, the colony like that the colony likely has your the right clone it has the insert in there or whatever and you can then if it does you can you then have that tube that overnight culture growing already to do your to do your mini prep the next day and if it doesn't then you just bleach this and drain it down the sink once they're all done then you just go and you stick it in the incubator um, for an overnight growth and then tomorrow I'll come in and hopefully they'll all have grown and then I will be able to do my mini preps um, if you can't work with them right away you can actually store them in the fridge for like a week or so they say um, before you actually go and do whatever you want to do with them so yeah, so to pick a colony, remember choose one of the nice big gloopy ones that's well isolated so you don't get any of the surroundings. Just kind of like dip it in with your pipette tip and stick it in the liquid. Make sure that you actually touched it um, so you can look and see that you touched it, but make sure that you're, you're not touching anything around it. So don't kind of like swipe it. Instead, just pick it up and put it in. Remember, these should each be genetically identical, at least in theory, because bacteria divide so fast they can acquire mutations, um, but these are at least going to be more similar probably than the cells all the way over here on this plate. And so yeah, so pick your colonies and start your cultures and have fun.